to identify the cation of a salt, the first foremost step is to do the preliminary examination. To get some information about the cation when the salt is in its dry form. This is also known as dry test analysis. Preliminary examination composes of two parts. First is to observe the color of the salt. The salts of certain cations have characteristic colors. Based on the color, some inferences can be drawn. For example, if the color of the salt is blue, this indicates the presence of either copper ions or cobalt ions. If the color of the salt is blue, red, violet or pink, it may be due to the presence of cobalt ions. Iron salts are usually either light green or brown in color and certain salts are white in color. Another important aspect of preliminary examination is the dry heating test. Certain salts change color on heating. We would do the heating of a copper salt and observe the change. For this, we would require the spirit lamp and take some salt in the test tube with the help of a spatula. Also, we would require a test tube holder, grip it and perform the dry heating test. The color of copper salt initially is blue when it is cold. Let us see if any change is observed on heating it. On heating the copper salt, we are able to see that the color is fading away. The blue color of the salt is fading away. There is a loss of water on the test tube which because of the water of crystallization. As we can see the blue color of this salt is changing to white. Thus the dry heating test helps us to indicate that maybe this salt contains copper ions. As we can clearly see on dry heating the color of copper salt has changed from blue to white. Thus preliminary examination helps us to indicate the presence of cation present in the given salt. We shall now proceed to the wet analysis. After this the systematic confirmatory identifications are made by preparing the solution of the salt. The testing of the cation in the solution of salts is known as wet test analysis. Different cations have been divided in groups 1 to 6 based on the solubility products of the salts. However, the ammonium cation is special special because it is placed in a separate group that is group 0 because it forms soluble salts with all the reagents. The placement of different cations in different groups is as shown in the table. Group 0 we have ammonium ion, group 1 
lead ion. Group 2 comprises of lead ion and the copper ion. For group 3, we have aluminum ions and ferric ions. Group 4 comprises of 4 cations, cobalt ion, nickel ion, manganese ion and zinc ion. For group 5, we have barium ions, strontium ions, calcium ions and group 6, we have magnesium ion. The table clearly shows how different ions have been placed in different groups and what are the group reagents of these groups. Our today's aim is to analyze the cation of group 0, that is ammonium ion. On heating ammonium salt with NaOH solution, ammonia gas is evolved, which produces white fumes of ammonium chloride on bringing in contact with dilute HCl. When ammonia gas is passed through Nessler's reagent, a brown coloration or precipitate of basic mercury 2 amido iodine is formed. For today's experiment, the material required are as follows. We shall require few test tubes, test tube holder, spatula, glass rod, a W tube, few droppers, NaOH solution, dilute hydrochloric acid, Nessler's reagent, a spirit lamp, and most importantly, ammonium salt. Let us start with the experiment. We need a test tube and we take a pinch of ammonium salt with the help of a spatula. Then we would require NaOH solution, about 2 to 3 ml of dilute NaOH is required and is carefully added to the test tube. We would need a test tube holder to hold the test tube and a spirit lamp for heating. As we know, on heating the ammonium salt with dilute NaOH, ammonia gas would be evolved. Ammonia gas has a peculiar smell. Carefully smell the ammonia gas. Now we would need dilute hydrochloric acid. Let us just switch off the spirit lamp and bring a glass rod dipped in dilute hydrochloric acid. We know that ammonia gas in contact with dilute HCl forms white dense fumes of ammonium chloride as can be seen here. The white dense fumes are of ammonium chloride. It is one of the confirmatory tests for the ammonium ion. These fumes in solid state may also deposit on the glass rod. In the same test tube, we can add Nessler's reagent to do the other confirmatory test. Nessler's reagent formula K2HGI4. When we pour 1 to 2 drops of Nessler's reagent, we see the formation of a brown precipitate or coloration which is due to the formation of a complex commonly known as Millen's base. It is basic mercury amido iodine complex. Another suggestive way for doing this test is with the help of a W tube. A W tube takes its name from its shape. There are two ends. From one end we can add the salt 
while from the other end which has bulb we will take the Nessler's reagent. With the help of a spatula we shall add the salt in the W tube carefully. Then we would add Nessler's reagent from the side of the bulb. We would need dilute NaOH then we add it to the salt. Ammonia gas is evolved which would turn the Nessler's reagent brown. As we can see salt plus dilute NaOH liberates ammonia gas which passes through the Nessler's reagent making it brown in color. So we have performed the test for the confirmation of ammonium ions which are present in group 0. The presence of brown color clearly indicates the test for ammonium ions. Today we have performed the test for identification of ammonium cation in the given salt. Some precautions and sources of error. Avoid inhaling excess of ammonia gas. We must add some drops of potassium hydroxide solution in Nessler's reagent. Let us recapitulate what we have learned today. Salts of ammonium ions when heated in presence of NaOH solution gives ammonia gas which combines with hydrochloric acid to form white fumes of ammonium chloride. When this gas is passed through Nessler's reagent, a brown precipitate is formed which confirms the presence of ammonium ions. Let me leave you with an exercise today. Mm -hmm.